Hello friends, so here we, can, we are with an another lecture discussing the carbon dioxide laser which is a gas laser and these are the topics that we will be covering under this lecture. Firstly, I would like to mention that uh, this laser is a molecular gas laser. In the last lecture, we have discussed the helium neon laser system which is the atomic gas laser system because of the inert nature of the gases that were used for the helium neon laser but here in this case this is a molecular gas laser and is a pole level laser system which is developed by professor pillai the active medium of this laser is the envelope of gases comprising of carbon dioxide gas nitrogen gas helium gas or water vapor vapor which are filled under suitable partial pressures within a discharge tube and the vibration states of the co2 molecule acts as the active center this gases are filled in a discharge tube and this discharge tube is connected with the power supply so the electric discharge is the pumping method to achieve population inversion within this system the ends of the dis uh, discharge tube are fitted with a NACL Bristol's window so that the laser's light that will be generated out of the of the system will be polarized and this whole tube is placed inside an optical resonator which is made up of two concave mirrors one is fully reflecting mirror and another one is a partially reflecting mirror so this is the schematic diagram of the of this laser and uh, as I mentioned that uh, the vibration states are the active center. So I must mention the, what are the vibration states. So as we all know that carbon dioxide molecule has a carbon atom at the center with two oxygen atoms attached, one at both sides. And such a molecule exhibits three modes of vibration. Number one is the stretching, symmetric stretching mode where the carbon atom, this is the carbon atom, this is at the rest and both the oxygen atoms vibrate simultaneously along the axis of the molecule departing or approaching the fixed carbon atom in contrast to this we have a symmetric stretching mode where both the carbon atom as well as the oxygen atom are at motion and the oxygen atom move in one direction while the carbon atom moves in the another direction hence both the atoms vibrate asymmetrically the next is the bending mode in which the oxygen atom as well as the carbon atom vibrate perpendicular to the molecular axis. And this is the energy level diagram for the carbon dioxide system. But firstly, I would like to mention the role of these gases that is the carbon dioxide, nitrogen and helium gas. As I mentioned that carbon dioxide, this is the main component of this system and the vibration states of this carbon dioxide gas acts as the active center now what is the role of nitrogen gas it is interesting to note that it is relatively easy to excite a nitrogen molecule to its first vib vibrational energy level via an electric discharge electric field discharge and the first energy level of the nitrogen has almost the same energy as that of the, uh, that of the upper level of carbon dioxide hence the transfer of vibration energy from the nitrogen to the carbon dioxide is easily achieved through collisions and the helium and the primary role of the helium is to help the carbon dioxide to relax it means to move it from the lower to the lowest energy state and re-entering the excitation process the uh, helium atom collides with the carbon dioxide molecules and vibration energy is transferred from carbon dioxide molecule to the helium atom. So this is the ground state of the nitrogen atom. And because of the electric discharge, the atoms get excited and they raise to the excited state. This process is represented by this equation. This is the nitrogen gas, mo um, gas molecule. It is a... Uh, uh, it is uh, interacted with the electron and because of this the nitrogen moves to the excited state and as I know as I mentioned that uh, the 
nitrogen has the same energy as with that of the carbon dioxide so the now the nitrogen molecule in the excited state collide with the carbon dioxide atoms in the ground state and excite them to higher electronic vibration and rotational levels so this is the nitrogen nitrogen molecule in the excited state this is uh, interacting with the carbon dioxide molecule in ground state because of this the carbon dioxide molecule get excited so after this excitation we um, because of this excitation no since the excited level of uh, nitrogen is very close to e5 level of carbon dioxide population inversion in the e5 level is achieved and as soon as the population inversion is achieved any of the spontaneously emitted photon will trigger laser action in the tube so mainly two laser lines are produced which is from e5 level to e4 level giving an output of 10.6 micron and the other one is from e5 level to e4 level which is uh, 9.6 micro micron but it is interesting to note that the intensity of this 10.6 micron laser transition is much more as compared to 9.6 micron laser transition so the major laser output of this co2 laser is 10.6 micron and the construction of this co2 laser is quite simple it has a continuous output continuous wave output and have high efficiency high output power and this output power can also be tailored by monitoring the length of the gas tube but because of such a high power this is a Mm, this may cause damage to our eyes and uh, there are always some issues of contamination of oxygen by carbon monoxide which will have some effects on laser action the operating temperature plays an important role in determining the output power and uh, since i, I have uh, shown you that nacl reflecting uh, windows are resistors windows are used so corrosion may occur at the reflecting plates and the accidental exposure of this laser may dam damage to our eyes because this gives 10.6 micron laser light which is which falls in the invisible infrared regions so they are not visible and may cause damage to our eyes however because of such high power this laser can be used for material processing welding cutting drilling sol soldering etc they can also be used for remote sensing applications for the medical applications like treatment of liver lung diseases neurosurgery general surgery and bloodless operations so in summary the co2 laser is a gas laser which is a four level laser system a molecular gas laser consists of co2 gas nitrogen gas and helium gas the active center are sorry it is uh, written wrong here the active center is the vibration state of the carbon dioxide and the pumping method that is used is the electric discharge pumping source is high voltage dc power supply resonator is made up of concave mirrors polished differently the output power is quite high up, approximate up, up to 10 kilowatt and the nature of the output is continuous and the, the wavelength that is emitted by this laser is in the invisible far ir region that is 10.6 micron So in the next lecture we will be discussing about the semiconductor lasers. Thank you all.